Welcome to the Purity Pulse podcast, your go-to podcast for the natural health industry and everything purity life. I'm Erin Macklin. And I'm Julie Drapeau. Today, we're going to go through our regular weekly check-ins. We're going to have an interview with Linda Biggs, co-founder of Joni, and mm-hmm. then we'll do our regular new to purity life. So since we have Linda with us from Joni, mm-hmm. made me think about back in time and talking about periods and menstruation and all of that. And that was quite taboo in my years. Right. Taboo in the sense that, you know, going to the store to buy some tampons or anything like that, you almost felt like so shy yeah. and almost hiding. And oh, the worst was, hey, dad, you're going to the grocery. Can you pick up? And I was like, no. <laughs> I don't think I ever asked my dad. No, <laughs> no. I did ask Not my once. dad. Yeah. And later on in age, he, he agreed. Yeah. But uh, first it was like, so like another level yeah but uh do you have any stories like that or was it like that for you but it's funny that you bring up dad. i don't think i've ever spoken a word about my period with my dad no 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 um yeah i don't know like at home eh, we didn't talk about it too much um stories it's oh man menstruation is a long process eh? like you think back <laughs> to when when it first started and then where you are now and all the times in between like i, I remember This is going to be, okay, well, I think feel like this episode is just going to be TMI, so we'll just throw it on the table. Go for it. (laughs) Like when it, when you first got your period, I remember using pads and being, and just walking around being like, I'm sure everybody can tell that I have have a diaper. (laughs) Yeah. Like, and just always thinking like, is it obvious? Can people see it? Like, oh my goodness. And just like, that was your whole day just being like, is it right? And, and, and yeah. And is it still saving me? Am I going to have a problem? Like, oh man, it's a lot to get used to when you're a kid. That is. And did it start early for you? Like No, what age? I was waiting for mine. I was waiting. I was, I was, let's go, let's go. I wanted okay. to be with everybody But what else. age were you? Do you um, remember? How old? I was in grade nine, I think. So 14. Okay. Maybe 13, I guess that's 13, 13, sort of the 14. average. I don't, uh, I think yeah. average is 12. Oh, maybe. I was like a it's, late it's comer younger, then. It's younger now. <laughs> I know. Oh, God. I have relatives that are like 10, 11. Maybe it's earlier. That would be good to do a study and seeing the change mm-hmm. and seeing like the, if it, yeah, if there's yeah, a what's change the evolution. Now? Yes. When did you get yours? 16. 16. Oh, I thought I was late. I didn't know I was, I didn't want them, honestly, because yeah. I was doing lots of sports. And for right. me, it was like a pain in my rear because... Yeah. Yeah, exactly. You have that thing in your pants and you're like, oh, this is not comfortable. Yeah. I have to go swimming. Well, what now? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And uh, Limiting. Oh, and my mom was so like, oh, you're becoming a woman. And I was <laughs> like, no, I'm already. And I don't need this because that's yeah. really an endurance to my day. And yeah. there's this and yeah. that. And this is just a hassle. Yes. Yeah. And my age group, because we have age difference, it was, you weren't talking about it. And I remember my mom talking to me like really undercover. And yeah. this is what happened. And I was so annoyed with that because I was like, just spit it out. <laughs> What's <laughs> happening here? And tell me what to do with this. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, I'm just uh, looking at younger people now and I think it's it's yeah it's more open. Well, even um, with even with my boys I'm very open about Oh, that's it. good. Like, to me it's I want my boys to be the one that, you know, see one of their classmates and say here's my sweater. Like that that's what I want from my boys. I want them to know exactly what's going on. I want them to be supportive with their mm-hmm. with their partners. Yes. Um should they get that opportunity as well. So Yeah, that's yeah, very good. I think it's it's so important obviously to set up your girls to know what's going on and how to deal with it. But I think it's just as important to have have boys and men understand what mm-hmm. that's all about and how to support it too. Yeah. And you go from, yeah, and we have the chance again to speak with, uh, with Linda about her Joni brand. But I mean, you look at what's going on in conventional. And I would say that most of us, like, did you start with conventional brand? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think, I feel like at that age, everything was conventional to me. I didn't really. I agree. I wasn't uh I, I agree. I mean, even at that time, I feel like there really wasn't natural, there weren't natural options. Even if you went into a natural health food store, there really wouldn't have been much. I was trying to remember like the first time, like around that age, actually, I was already very interested in natural product yeah. at 16. And I was in store, but I don't remember. It's like that category was not something you were thinking about. And <laughs> throwing that a diva cup kind of product, yeah. that yeah. would have been 
oh, what are you talking yeah. about? Right. Well, even it's years a- later, like I remember even even when I started working in retail, the concept of a diva cup, like me bringing that up to other people and them just being like, that's bizarre. Like, who would ever do that? Why would somebody do that? And, you know, of, of cups. Absolutely. And now, I mean, I now mind you, there's still plenty of people I think that have that same thought process, but it's sure a lot more acceptable now than it was. It is, 10, and I, I, 20 years ago. And to be honest, I've I've never used it myself. No, no, and I understand. I mean, I'm we sell yep. brands, yeah, yeah. and and I understand. My sister use it, and yep. she when she used to work in a health food store, she yep. was selling it. She had a funny story though. <laughs> there's a lady who came back and. She came with a piece of, I would say, I'll call it a goo, because you could not identify what that piece was. And my sister said, what is this? She says, well, it didn't work. And she says, what didn't work? She says, well, I tried to put my diva cup and clean it. And so she put it on the pan on the stove oh, in no. wa- boiling like boiled, water. Boiled. <laughs> yeah. So it totally melt. And uh, so we had a good laugh about that. But to me, it was just, I like things that are very quick. Uh, mm-hmm. Not that it's not, but in my head, it's it's uh, no, extra but I work. I do remember even starting it, and I remember reading. Oh, you know, it takes a couple cycles to get used to. Mm-hmm. True story. It does. Yeah. I mean, you gotta. It takes a couple cycles to get used to and yeah. figure that out. But honestly, so did everything else, right? Like it's just that that's not where everybody starts. Yeah, it's all depends on where you want to go. But the good thing now is that there's many brands, lots of education, mm-hmm. lots of education about what's not good about you know, yes. conventional. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, uh, and I'm think glad. about some of your most absorbent parts and what you're putting next to them for hours and hours. Absolutely. For weeks, you know. So we're very happy that we'll get a chance to uh, to speak with uh, with Linda. Yes, I'm sure she'll have lots of very interesting stories. Yeah, we'll stories keep some question then, to her because yeah. we can go on and yeah. we'll wait for her. Yeah. Thanks so much, Linda, for joining us. We're so glad to have you. Super proud to be here. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about your background and what brought you into the natural product industry? Yeah, surprisingly, I have a tech background. So I was computer science from university and I went full tech mode, uh, tech startups for a very long time. Uh, and then I frankly got burnt out. Um, I was working with a lot of men and I was like, where are all these women leaders? I was, you know, really craving that sort of sisterhood. So what I realized was I was a bit of a Jill of all trades. I could do a lot of things, a little bit of a lot of things. And so a lot of these founders didn't even have, didn't have a business background. So they were having a hard time scaling. So when I came in, I was able to help them with a lot of the foundational elements. And I love that because I love working with female founders. Um, and then I felt this nagging call to just start something of my own and to, you know, Linda, it's time to invest in yourself. And the universe answered back and introduced me to Jay Ash, my co-founder, and um, very serendipitously uh, through a mutual connection. And that's, that's the end of that. Now we're here four years later with Joni. Did you know that this was going to be your foray into the natural product? Like, was that Jay Ash that was on that track or you or how did that happen? Yeah, so Jay Ash is a pharmacologist by trade. And so he was at the University of Victoria and he was studying his doing his sort of his last uh, project for his master's degree. And he was looking in the I'm quoting feminine hygiene, feminine health space. And he stumbled upon a statistic that one in three women under the age of 25 in Canada cannot afford period care. And he's from India. One in three. And he was floored because he's coming here as an immigrant thinking Canada is a very rich country. Like, how can this problem be? India has this problem. How can Canada have the same problem? So he dug a bit more in the industry and realized how antiquated it was. And even as a man, someone who doesn't menstruate, um, you know, he realized the the need for innovation in the space and the need to drive more sustainable products and more sustainable products that are accessible. But he was running into roadblocks. Clearly, he's a man, an immigrant man in India, trying to you know, in a very yeah. female med space. And um, this is where the serendipity comes in, because at that time I was, you know, kind of doing my own thing and, and um, on my end and a mutual friend introduced us. And um, when I started chatting with Jayash, I had this realization that as a natural consumer myself, I had menstruated over 300 times in my life by that point. And I resonated more with the shoe brand or my, you know, water bottle company than I did with a period care brand. And I'm like, 
why? This is such an intimate experience that we have every single month, potentially. And yet I still feel like there's no brand out there that I really connect to. And I asked friends and they kind of all felt the same way. And so from a brand marketing, just overall cultural perspective as a natural consumer, I just felt like there was a gap in the market. So with Jayesh's experience and my experience, I feel like we could do something really impactful here together. We put our put our heads together and that's sort of how we move things forward. And in sp- connecting with Jayesh background with university, I think that you guys are doing a program, right? Giving Giving away, you have the dispensers. And can you talk a little bit about that? Because that's significant and it's really helping those who cannot, you know, get, you know, the, the products themselves. Yeah, it's been about evolution. So we've always been an impact brand. And that's one of the things that we felt was really important in the space. Oftentimes, nonprofits will get random donations based on what a random company can, wants to give away. So for a community that might be pads, or it might just be tampons, but it doesn't necessarily take into effect consideration the people in that community and what they need. So this idea of bodily agency. So we created a 5% give back from the very beginning, giving back to nonprofits that we partner with long term. So we ask them, what does your community need? And sometimes that's tampons and sometimes it's a combination and sometimes it's just pads. And so they're getting what they need versus here, be happy with what you get. When we first started, we launched March 2020, the day the World Health Organization declared the pandemic, that was fun. Wow. We, we launched with a um, slightly different model, a one-to-one, which we evolved over time, but we donated 50 pads for every one pad we sold that year because the need was so great. Bookkeeper was freaking out because they're like, how yes. is this sustainable? But for us, it was more like we knew eventually it would catch up. We knew that the need was super great. We knew that our partnerships and our relationships were really important for our foundational growth. And so for us, it was an investment to show that we're committed. We are a small brand, but we're committed to moving this forward. And because of that, we've built a lot of trust with our community. Where did where did you find such confidence that you would be able to to do that, that 50 to 1 as a, as a startup brand? I think as a founder, you kind of have this very unrealistic optimism. You have to. I think that's what keeps you sane is this idea that like one more day, one more week, one more month, it, and we're moving in that direction. So I think you just continuously lean into that. And so we just really trusted our gut wow. with it. And we did see like, you know, signal versus noise. We saw a lot of signal when it came to the donations we were making and the partnerships we were building. And so that signal was really important messaging for us to be able to continue to grow and use that model in the foundational elements of how we grow. Did that differentiate yourself even from other natural brand out there, you know, being very activist in supporting i'm i'm blown away by the numbers you said honestly i didn't know and that's it's shocking which is something that you know we go through our lives many times and earlier aaron and i were talking about the stigma before you know when we're younger talking about you know menstrual period that was like don't talk too much about it and you had to go in store to buy them and you all you were like really shy or you had to talk yourself through okay I'm going in to buy this um, but I think that brands yeah. like yours you know the the why behind the brand is is to support those who can't afford it but also to make periods normal out there Is that correct? Absolutely. I mean, funny story, we were going to name the brand unapologetic because that that was sort of the sentiment that we had. Like we need to be like, we want to be unapologetic about our menstrual cycles. Uh, I want my daughters to be unapologetic. And because when you're unapologetic about it, then you can ask for help when you need it. You can talk about it when you want to. You can educate yourself without this layer of like shame and stigma that's with it. I mean, unapologetic is too long for a brand name, but that's the sort of the ethos and the sentiment with Joni is that we want to build a brand that allows you to be unapologetic about your menstrual cycles that you can get to where you need to get to versus this necessary evil kind of like, I have to deal with it every month. Oh gosh, this is a brand I'll buy this time. We really wanted people to really connect with the brand. We see the bigger picture being, it's not just retail, that's one distribution channel, but it's also commercial. 
which is where dispensers come in. And it's also online, like the omni-channel like has been around for a few years. We know that's how brands survive. But for us, the commercial channel really was more about how are we driving our mission forward of making sure that everyone who needs period care has access to it. And we really strongly believe that the only way that's going to be possible, so menstrual equity in Canada, is when government, private sector, and nonprofits work together to build this ecosystem of accessibility. So then going back to our strategy every year, going back to our even our roadmap, it's like, well, what does that mean for us? And that's where our dispensers came in. And it's amazing how low the bar is in the commercial space. Like this hasn't been changed in a long time. We all know that. But the data shows that 87% of people who menstruate get caught off guard. And then 37% of them will have to leave school or work to find a solution. So why is this not something that we're looking at when, you know, over 30% of the population menstruate? So more and more regulations are changing, both federally and provincially, which is mandating, just like toilet paper. You don't carry a roll of toilet paper around. So period care will eventually be made available places. But we really want to lead the innovation in this space. Well, I've never considered that about mandating it like toilet paper, that it just would need to be, just needs to be available at, just as, as toilet paper. Very interesting. Absolutely. You know, it way. Well, it, and as you say, it, it's just, it, it happens. You get caught off guard, yeah. like often. Yeah. And so you're like, well, what now? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Got to go home because there's nothing here, right? And it's funny, I was on the plane um, one and once and oh, not once many times, but once it happened, I got caught off guard. And right. um, I was talking to the flight attendant and then she says, well, I'll show you the little dispensary that we have in the washroom, but mm-hmm. there's no sign on it. And I said, yeah. well, that would be a good idea that you put the sign on it because I'm sure I'm not the only yeah. person. She says, yeah, but some people are very sensitive to oh showing. Goodness. And I'm like, mm, no, we need a sign on yeah. this. So she showed me that little bucket in the washroom yeah. on the floor, people. It's on the right side. And there's yeah. like tampons and pads there but uh, there's still lots of work to do for sure even just the smallest thing like that exacerbates the idea that it's something that you don't want to talk about or you don't want to see right mm-hmm, mm-hmm. so that's uh yeah th- that's great that you're uh that you're talking and and you know leading the way here because we're talking to a lot of um, store and retailers here on the podcast what would you say in store what would be we 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 know, but it's good to hear it again. What's the big difference between using conventional to natural, like to use your products instead? What's the benefit health-wise? There's very little regulation in the space when it comes to the materials used and, and pads and the tampons. And so um, you're going to get more high quality materials in the natural organic products. You're also going to get more independent third-party certification. So for Joni, we're bamboo pads. So we don't have cotton pads. And bamboo is a very sustainable crop. It doesn't require pesticides. It requires significantly less water to manufacture. And it's a closed loop system that we use. And we have independent third-party certifications that will certify not only the materials that we're using, but the whole supply chain and also the conditions that these these pads and tampons are being produced in, which is really important to us. So we've been to the manufacturing plants, we've built really close relationships to all of our suppliers. And that's really important because as a consumer, knowledge is power. So if you're able to understand the ingredients that you're using and make a decision for yourself based on that, that is powerful for you. And so not to say that there's not room for conventional products, there's definitely a a more accessible price point. And You know, some places in Canada only have conventional products available to them, which we're trying to change. But as a sustainable, more natural product for us, we're bamboo based, um, but we're we're also a very acceptable price point. So I didn't want it to be this high quality natural brand, but it's at a price point that doesn't turn off shelves, that people don't want to, you know, take a chance on. I really want it to be... You know, if you're organic curious, if you're natural curious, okay, well, this is just, you know, slightly more than a conventional product, I'm going to try them. Because we know that once people try Joni, we have really, really great results. You know, 97% of our customers give us five star reviews, they love them. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's all about education, too, right? Because it's, again, we're talking earlier, it's, 
We talk about, you know, face cream, body cream and, and makeup that we use. We're very careful, deodorant and all that. But when you think that a tampon is right in, like in there, yeah, uh, that's yeah. something that you need to invest in yeah. making sure that it's the right material to get in there because yeah. it's pretty, it could be, you know, dangerous for sure and create other issues that we hear about definitely. So it's uh, it's educating. So for the store, I would say connect with you, connect with Joni, the brand, or and, and get your staff educated. So when they have customers that comes in and and even create some shout out in store on you know end caps and signage to bring to people's attention because people that have been using conventional and not we'll say clean or not good for usage and they're used to do that, they don't ask themselves questions. Yeah. But then when you get yeah. educated, it's as important, um, if not more, than your toothpaste or your deodorant yeah. that you switched. Absolutely. You're totally right. And it's, you know, we're up against the Goliath in the industry, really. Like, they've been around for a long time. Oh, yes. <laughs> and so the only way forward for us, we can't, out, you know, compete them in terms of cash flow. But what we can do is a grassroots movement. And so the education is really about that grassroots. Let's help educate the team people who menstruate and don't, both men and women, so that you can speak to the products in an educated way so that people can make the best decision for their body. Because ultimately, I can't tell you what works for you because you're different than me. We're all different. We all have different needs, wants, cultural experiences. There's so many variables. So for you to make the best decision for you comes down to that education piece. And with period care, it's an interesting one because it's not like, you know, deodorant where there's a level of like, education that also includes the history of period care and like why as a culture do we make these decisions versus other decisions and like a perfect example that people don't really think about is the applicator tampon versus a non-applicator tampon and how we have been conditioned to use an applicator tampon in Canada because of a decision that a man made in the early 1900s it was completely unacceptable for a woman to be considered touching herself in that area. So he created, invented an applicator tampon and a very popular brand bought that happen. And the very popular brand had a stronghold in, you know, Canada, the US and UK. And guess what's popular in Canada, the US and UK? Applicator tampons. At the same time, those Europeans were like, we could care less if you touch yourself in that area. And what's popular in Europe and Australia? Yes. It's the non-applicator tampon. And like this history is just, it's just like an aha moment, right? Because when you totally. come to realize, oh, well, it's not a coincidence that the applicator is as long as your finger. And it's not dirty to use your finger. And it's more marketing that's influenced me in many ways well, maybe I can try this other product. And that trying means it costs less, there's less waste, you might actually like it better. And it's not an either or, you can try both and see what you like. So for us, and that's really the essence of Joni. It's like, let's talk about why we make these decisions that we make. Let's talk about what's in this product. And then from there, you make the decision that works best for you. That's fantastic. I'm just learning so much with you right? today. I love that Hello. history and the background of everything because it is true. People don't, they don't know the the background of it, but all that education in those type of categories is super important. And you're doing good uh, Instagram posting too. Your, uh, your, your posting are pretty helping to share that as well. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're slowly building TikTok. For us, marketing has actually to be totally frank, you know, a bit of an afterthought. As a small brand, you know, you do what you can. Yes. Um, I remember like early days before we had any money for photography, I would take photos of my own like blood clots and blood in the bathroom to put it on social media because if I didn't feel comfortable talking about mine, then how could I ask other yeah. people to do the same? So I, we 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 really want, with our with all of our marketing and all of our social media, we really lean into that like, how do we help educate? And so while it might not be like as flashy or, you know, clickbaity as others, we just really don't go down that road. That's not who we are. It's really just about the education piece and the awareness. Yeah. I can see from your online presence, too, that inclusivity is so important to you guys. Mm -hmm. And I hear you use phrases like 
people who menstruate. Uh, what has that path looked like for you or how has that changed kind of what what you guys have targeted? Yeah, I mean, I'll be fully transparent. Like when we first launched, we de- we definitely had like women in our terminology and, and we, we still use the term women, but that doesn't necessarily include everyone who menstruates. And what I've learned over the course of these four years and what I've been educated on is that uh, gender and menstruation are two and separate things. Menstruation is a biological function. It's related to sex, not to gender. And so when we're talking about just women, and especially, here's a perfect and blank story. I have two daughters. They're just from 15 and 13. And when my daughter started menstruating to say, oh, well, you're a woman now. Mm-hmm. Yes, in a way that's like, you know, welcome to this, you know, club that we have, but also it's kind of creepy. Like, like, is she like, is this, I mean, a woman? Well, what does that mean? I'm a woman. And it, that again, there's a whole history to Go why you're <laughs> exactly. So for, so for us, it's more of like the lens we take is, do you menstruate? If you do, we're here to support you. Yeah, exactly. uh, It doesn't matter to us how you identify And what that has allowed us to do is really get other people into the conversation that wouldn't otherwise be part of it. So, you know, neurodiversity and how that impacts your menstrual cycle, how you identify anybody who's in the LGBTQ community, they have a very different lens with their menstrual cycles. And so what does that experience look like? And as a cis woman myself, like, and I'm married, I have two kids, but I don't necessarily want to be stereotyped into the pinks and the purples and like right. running through the field of flowers with a smile on my face and butterflies. I'm like, <laughs> can we just move forward? Uh, so I think there's space for everyone in this conversation. Nice. Is that why your packaging is uh, bright, like blues and yellow? Yeah. So you went for the kind of the neutral, not the pink and little flowers? <laughs> Yeah, very, I mean, from the aesthetic standpoint, we very much, I very much wanted to have something that, you know, I could be an architectural digest magazine. Like that is like the level period care could be beautiful. Why not? Why can't period care be aspirational from a branding perspective? And so it, well, on one hand, differentiates us on the shelf because we're so minimalist and those neutral colors. And so it really helps people pick us up off the shelf and be like, oh, what is this? Mm-hmm. Um, and we're actually just updating doing some updates to our packages that I'm really excited about based on some feedback. But that's always been the design-led aspect has always been how we do our packaging, how we do our dispensers. So we're launching a new commercial dispenser and it's beautiful. Like, you know, property managers spend millions of dollars making their buildings beautiful and then stick this god-awful, you know, hospital. Pretty archaic, yes. Why can't you consider like what what can be beautiful, also practical, Mm -hmm. That's sort of the the niche that we're moving into and on the commercial side, but it also is the big part of our brand on the retail side as well. We knew that we would have a, a lot of uh, great uh, knowledge coming from you and, and learning more about your brand. And before we uh, before we wrap up, we know that you are a very entrepreneur and you have that drive in you. We always like to ask, you know, out to disconnect because it's a lot of work. You have kids too. What do you do personally to... Uh, do you have like favorite sports or what is your get out or get away to disconnect from that? Oh, that's a great question. And it's true. Like as a founder, you just typically, you know, you're 12, 14 hour days and it's hard sometimes. But yeah. um, lately it's been honestly long walks and podcasts. Like that has been my thing. And like, I, you know, the whole perimenopause thing and how that's impacting me. It's like, it's really driving me out and to like really take care of myself, make sure it's like the silver lining to it is it's making sure that I'm okay and my health is okay, both physically and mentally. So I do a lot of reading and I do a lot of walks and I do a lot of podcasts and that's sort of like my sanity time. Yeah. And then of course, you know, travel with family travel for me is life. I love it. So I always have a trip planned. So uh, those What's are your those next are my... one. What's your next trip? Non-work related. We're Non-work. going to Mexico. Back... So yeah, I'm back to Mexico in spring break next year. To uh... I grew up in in Veracruz, in Mexico. So we kind of go back there, and my kids can see the culture, and it's my, it's my happy place. Nice. So you lived many years in Mexico yourself. Yeah, my mom's from um, Veracruz. My abuelita's yeah. from um, the Mexico, so Mexico City, and so I grew up in. But obviously, you can't tell because my father is Canadian and I've got zero tanning ability. And, uh, and 
and then I came back to Canada and then was here since, um, yeah, basically elementary school onward. But you have the passion and uh, all in your heart. So that's where it's, it is. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I add the spice. That's what my husband always does. So <laughs> I'm getting spicing this. <laughs> the perfect awesome. combination. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, we'd love to keep you around for some uh, new to purity life. So we will see you again momentarily. Okay, we're going to jump into some new to Purity Life, and we are keeping Linda around to tell us a little bit about the new Joni Incontinence product. Thanks for sticking around with us. Do you want to tell us a little bit about the uh, product? What are we looking at here? Yeah, Joni Incontinence pads. I'm so pumped about incontinence pads. Like, who would have thought that we're bringing (laughs) sex back with the incontinence pads? That's what we like to say. It's just sort of part of conversations that we've been having ongoing with a lot of our customers. I think it's a natural fit. There's a lot of stigma around incontinence. We think of incontinence, we think of, you know, an elderly person in a home, potentially. But incontinence has a lot of different faces. It could be there's someone on our team who's 30, who's into CrossFit, and they need the support for very different reasons than I might, who's a mother of two, you know, just light stress incontinence. And they were using our pads, but they're not really meant for urine versus blood. So we really wanted to create a high quality product that spoke to the consumers that were looking for that solution that didn't want to walk down the diaper section, because that essentially was where the options were. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm, absolutely. And and you mentioned CrossFit. It's funny because I was talking with the team here when we pulled the product that I've seen it with my eyes. Like we do double unders, lots of skipping. And even yeah. for weight lifters, when they do lots yeah. of heavy mm-hmm. lifting, there's videos online that you see it's like totally like just peeing right there. And yeah. it's it's definitely common. And when we talk about stigma, talk about one you're in the middle yeah. of a class and it just yeah. happened. You're mortified. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. So, and the packaging is very neat, just like, like the rest of your brand is, it's not shouting out, you know, the problem, not that we want to hide it, but when people are starting to look into having some care, it's kind of nice charcoal, subtle, kind nice, of. yeah, charcoal. And the, uh, the middle part, which is, you know, the absorption part, so it's thicker compared to what you have? Is that the, the sort of the technology or what you have made different to make it more absorbent? So there's actually a charcoal chip inside the, the pad. Yeah, so that's what you see black charcoal. Yeah. yeah, and charcoal neutralizes odors. So that's something that you want to think about when you have an incontinence pad. I mean, not to say that you're using it for the whole day or it's on for the whole day, but the odor, odor control is definitely something you want to think mm-hmm. about. Um, and then the other thing that these are bamboo as well. So similar to our pads. So they're very soft. They're very absorbent. Um, but they also have the guards on the side. So there's like the wings. these little the wings. little weight. Um, they're like a little bit more than the wings. So the wings are there, but then there's also like a little guard oh, that yeah. comes up. Yeah. And that's oh, because, right. you know, with almost a little bit of an elastic. Exactly. So urine is a little, you know, different texture than, than blood. And right. so that adds a little bit of extra protection. We get people saying they don't know that they have them on, which is perfect. That's exactly what we want. And it's not for heavy incontinence. There's different levels of incontinence. It's stress incontinence. So those times where you know you might need a little bit extra support, you're going for a workout, maybe you're on an airplane, you know, you're there's a lot of different reasons why you might need this extra support. Um, my mother-in-law is going to kill me, but she uses them um, because she likes to fish. And she goes fishing for hours with my husband. And sometimes when you catch a fish, it's exciting and things yeah. happen. I'll add to something funny so she doesn't feel she's alone on the podcast hearing herself. But I have one in my hand, too, that every time she sneezes, sure enough, yeah. it happens. So yeah. that sneezing time is just that little incontinence moment that, you know, if you're somewhere, it's pretty, uh, you know, not comfortable for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And and for I I was thinking for a retailer as well. It's really something that they need to make, just like periods, but make more apparent in their store mm-hmm. to really shout it out for incontinence. Because I think in conventional, we're used to see the conventional brands with the big pad close to almost the diapers. Yeah. It's it's kind of normal, but I would say in our channel, it's not as proeminent because there's no like brand yet that would push this incontinence support. So I think that there's a need for, you know, 
bring some shelf talk or say that you yeah. have something yeah. so people can can have that. And even I would I would go a little even more and go in sports nutrition where you have the supplements for women. Yeah, that's good. Uh, or you know, or men BCAs and in th- men's as well if you want to put it there too. But to have it there so. You know, you work out, you get your creatine BCA, and you're like, oh, oh right, <laughs> class tonight. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I mean, that's an important piece and, and an important thing to raise is that this is part of your health, your solution, right? So this is this can go with your supplements. This can go with how you go through your day to day. There's no shame in it. And we've have we have been having a lot of conversations with retailers about placement of it. And so oftentimes the trans incontinence is like down at the very, very bottom, or you people miss it, or you have to go over to um, the diaper section. So but we know that our consumer base is asking for these products. So why can't we put them next to the period care products? Because typically you're buying a lot of times our customers are buying both. And so this makes it really, really easy. So that brand block has been really, really great uh, for us. And adding to that to convince even more those who are reluctant to do that, I always say go in your conventional grocery and store and look at where they put them. Yeah, You'll understand where to put it. It's not something that is foreign. That's where people will shop and think about it. Absolutely. So it's a very, very good, exciting uh, addition to the rest of your brand. So thank you for that. Thank you for walking us through it. Thanks for having me. What a great episode with Linda. Mm -hmm. So much information there. So be sure to subscribe to the show and leave us a rating and review. We want to hear from you. You can follow us on Instagram at Purity Life L Product LP and myself at JD underscore Girl Power. And I'm at Erin G. Macklin. And come back next week. Mm -hmm. Uh, We are going to be interviewing Michelle Montreux from M Squared. And he has a big announcement for us. Woohoo. 